Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Home Video Library. I'm your host, Nathan P. Butler, author of A Saga on Home Video, a fan's guide to U.S. Star Wars Home Video releases, which you can find on Amazon.com as we speak here. And this is the second in five episodes in which we're taking a look at the Star Wars parody, Spaceballs. Again, the ground rules for a parody being viable for future editions of the book, or for being fodder for this show, at least right now, we're going to expand it out probably a little bit more later to stuff like George Lucas and Love Troops and things like that, is the idea that a parody had to be given the nod by Lucas or Lucasfilm either during or before production. And we said there was, of course, the Phineas and Ferb Star Wars special, which was done by Disney, and then we had four others we've been covering recently. The Family Guy stuff, the Robot Chicken stuff, Fanboys, and Spaceballs. Now we pick up with part two of Spaceballs. In our last episode, we took a look at six Spaceballs releases, so we're keeping track. Six so far. Those were four that were on VHS, the original VHS release. Then, of course, we had the release where there was a corresponding widescreen and full screen copy, which gave us two more, and then the last of the VHS releases in 2000. We also took a look at both of the two, and that's where two more came in, laser discs, the original laser disc, and then the widescreen special edition laser disc that came a while later. But now, laser disc is out of the picture, and we've seen the last of the VHS tapes. The first of the DVDs gets released the same year as that last of the VHS tapes. So there's a little bit of crossover inside our timeline here. What we're going to look at in this episode are DVD releases of Spaceballs that pick up in 2000 with the first one and go through 2008. We are looking at seven different releases this time. What we're going to find, though, is that aside from this being Spaceballs, the DVD, and Spaceballs, merchandising, we're going to have a hell of a lot of what we might call Spaceballs, the reissues. Now, you might say, okay, well, what's a reissue? What's a re-release? What's the difference? I tend to think of re-releases myself as the same product getting a new release, but it may be something a little bit different. Um, so it may be, say, uh, the Force Awakens original release and then the 3D Collector's Edition that came later. Or it may be the Star Wars films being released individually, then released later in 1990 in a box set, or 92 in the first widescreen VHS box set, that sort of thing. Whereas a reissue, to me, is a little bit different, because in my parlance, a reissue is something that is the exact same item, just put out again, usually in different packaging, but that's it. Uh, no new bonus materials added or anything like that. So for me, uh, in a sense, the 3D Collector's Edition of The Force Awakens, for instance, is a reissue of a little bit, like that first bonus disc, but otherwise it's not reissues, it's a re-release of that film, because the other discs are new. Uh, with Star Wars, we tend to see a lot of reissues when it comes to disc-based media. So for DVD, for instance with Star Wars, we had the original trilogy get released for the first time in 2004, let's just use the widescreen disc as an example, and that of course came with that fourth disc that was the bonus disc with the Empire of Dreams and all the bonus material on it. They just then turned around and reissued that same disc again in 2005 for each film as part of that family pack, right, which is basically just the same product again just without the bonus disc. In 2006, they changed the label on the disc but kept the same authored disc, the same disc content in the way that it is set up, essentially just running off more of the same disc and putting a different label on top of it with an FBI warning on it. And that was released in 2006 as individual releases in the Best Buy 10, as the special version that had the little uh, uh, art print with it, the little poster print kind of thing, as a special version with the little concept art thing, and so on and so on, and then was reissued again in that form with that label in 2008 as part of that boxed set. And heck, for A New Hope, it was even reissued with another new label on the exact same disc for that 75th anniversary collection for 20th Century Fox. Right, so same disc contents, Sometimes with a different label, sometimes with the same label, but the same disc, essentially, being reissued over and over and over again. And we think that is crazy when that happens with Star Wars. That didn't change for the Star Wars DVDs until 2013, when they took the Blu-ray cuts and released them in a combo pack with the Blu-ray version, the 2011 version of each film being put onto DVD for the first time inside those combo packs. About the only time so far inside those combo packs. We think that's just crazy. That is way too many reissues of the Star Wars films with just the same content in different packaging. 
Well, if one could argue that Spaceballs takes certain elements of things as parodies and exaggerates them as a way of showing that parody, showing that satire, being funny, then maybe that was part of their process when it comes to the DVDs and Blu-rays, because holy hell, there's a lot of reissued Spaceballs Blu-rays. And a lot of this comes down to the fact that when it comes to Spaceballs, it's a standalone film, or at least it was a standalone film. There's now been a TV series that was god-awful, only lasted for three episodes, and then you got Spaceballs 2 supposedly coming soon. Uh, I'll believe that when I see actual material coming from it. Uh, it seems like it's been in development hell off and on for years. But for Spaceballs, because it's an individual film, and MGM loves to package its individual films with each other as sort of bargain deals, we wind up with a whole lot of instances of Spaceballs being reissued alongside other movies in different packages. And to me, those are different releases. They're reissues of the same discs in many cases, but different releases, so they count as we add up the 30-plus Spaceballs releases for a Star Wars home video collection. For those of you who, like me, have decided to start bringing in stuff like Spaceballs, which is a relatively recent thing for me. I gathered up most of these in the span of about the last two months or so, give or take. So let's take a look. How did Spaceballs begin on DVD? Well, the first Spaceballs DVD release was in 2000, and it was this. You know, this is going to look familiar uh, to some people who picked up later copies, so keep in mind there are some differences to packaging I'm going to point out here that are fairly subtle. What we have here is MGM DVD with the MGM logo here in the center. Notice it's the red MGM logo. It doesn't go all the way out to the sides. Okay, This is one of our singular ways of telling this release from some of the later ones. We have Mel Brooks, John Candy, Rick Moranis, Mel Brooks' Space Balls. And, of course, we have uh, Barf, Dark Helmet, and President Screw. We've seen that image previously in our last episode, looking at some of the packaging for the uh, VHS releases. You flip it over. We have our shot of them in the desert. We have a uh, screamingly funny Los Angeles Times. Little bitty President Screw over here, text about the film. And then down here, our crew and cast information and whatnot, legalese, and then... Two boxes of content here about what's in it. One says, Special Features, Audio Commentary by Mel Brooks, Special Behind the Scenes Footage, Original Theatrical Trailer. And then the bottom corner says, Screen Formats, Plural. Widescreen Version, Theatrical Release Format, Standard Version, Modified to Fit Your Screen. Yes, this has both versions. Before we open it, there's your spine. Just says Spaceballs, has the character faces again from the front. MGM logo, real tiny down there at the bottom, nothing up there at the top. We pop that sucker open, as I always say. We do have a booklet. You almost never have a booklet with a Spaceballs release, at least on DVD. So we got the same characters again with the Eagle Five, the Winnebago down there at the bottom. Screw with the twins, and then the uh, uh, chapter listing and whatnot. But then if you open it up, just some information about the film with some of the images, stuff like uh, uh, candy goes to the dogs, uh, helmet size does matter, etc., etc., and then uh, down here in the corner you got cast information. So I actually get a little insert here, which is unusual, and then here's the disc. You might say, well, you're showing us the wrong side, dumbass. We need the side that's got the label. You're showing us the bottom where the content is. <gasps> oh, yes. This is one of those god-awful DVD authoring styles that we saw in the past where basically one side is widescreen, the other side is full screen. The content otherwise is exactly the same. Uh, the menus are the same, the special features are the same. The only difference is whether the film itself is widescreen or full screen. But all that it gives us to tell us what's on this is this little ring okay, that goes around the center hole. And going clockwise, it says space balls, then in red, widescreen, then a product number, 96 minutes, USPG, uh, Canadian rating, copyright 2000, Metro Golden Mayor, uh, Pictures Inc., DVD symbol. Other side, a little bit different, space balls, standard in red, product number, 96 minutes, no rating listed, region one, no copying, subject to applicable laws, MGM Home Entertainment Inc., DVD, so slightly different 
uh, wording of what's around it, but one side in red says widescreen, the other side says standard. And again, we got to remember the way that this works. Just because this side says standard doesn't mean that the standard version of the film is on here. It's reversed. It's the opposite. So if you want to play the widescreen version, the widescreen content is on the side that says standard so that when you put it down into your player, the widescreen label is pointing up and is the one that you see. Uh, it's kind of counterintuitive until you actually start putting them into a flat player. Um, but this is it, right? It's the film, two-sided disc, and a label on both sides on the ring. For what it's worth, from a language standpoint, and this will actually matter in a moment, this version has a spoken languages for English, French, and Spanish, and then has subtitles only for French and Spanish, no English subtitles at all. As you go through the menu system, the menus all look like what you would think of as space balls, uh, not furniture, but space balls appliances, like Mr. DVD, Mr. Microwave, uh, and a steering wheel, basically, that looks like a steering wheel that you would use to fly something around in the space balls universe. There's even a weird one that has like a theatrical look with curtains pulled to the side, and it says Spaceballs the Drapes, which is a little bit weird. Now, the downside here is that none of this, in terms of special features, is new, okay? So this is the same audio commentary by Mel Brooks that was found on the last of the laser discs, the same original theatrical trailer as found on the last of the laser discs, and then also like the last on the laser disc, it is the same behind-the-scenes uh, footage or behind the scenes special. Now, then it gets ugly because you might say, well, wait a second, if that's the same thing as back on the laser disc, doesn't that mean the special features must be full screen? Why, yes, full screen, as in 4x3, fitting a standard definition TV screen in the older model of, of shape. Thing about this is, is that remember, this is not just a full screen film. One side is full screen, so we would expect 4x3. The other side is widescreen, and it's a freaking DVD. We would expect that the DVD is going to be different than the widescreen VHS and different than the widescreen Laserdisc in that it won't be letterboxed widescreen. It'll be anamorphic widescreen, meaning that if you play it on a widescreen television today, it'll still take up the entire width of the screen. You won't wind up with a 4x3 box in the middle with the movie, black bars on top and bottom, and black bars on the sides because it's not stretching all the way across. You would think that would be the case. You would be wrong. This is a letterboxed widescreen presentation of Spaceballs. Not exactly an ideal way to watch, but at least in 2000 it lets you watch it here with bonus features rather than on VHS that didn't have bonus features. But the presentation was still letterboxed widescreen or full screen. <sighs> now five years later, things got really awesome for Spaceballs, and we got Spaceballs the Collector's Edition on DVD. That is this. This is probably the ideal way to check out Spaceballs if you're going to be picking it up on DVD, so make sure you look for this one if you're looking for Spaceballs on DVD. MGM logo, Collector's Edition, Mel Brooks, John Candy, Rick Moranis, Mel Brooks's Spaceballs. We have our characters there, of course, down at the very bottom, two-disc DVD set. Okay. You look at the side. There, what we've got is the MGM logo, Collector's Edition, Spaceballs, two-disc DVD set. On the back, screamingly funny, again, information about the film, different image going across there with the different characters, special features listing that's much more extensive, cast crew information, and so on down there at the bottom. And importantly, 16x9 widescreen, 1.5x1 DVD screen format. What they don't tell you there, unless that's what DVD screen format is meant to mean to them, is that this one is anamorphic widescreen. This one, if you play it in your DVD player, will go all the way across the screen on a modern widescreen television. That is a very good thing. Again, lots of bonus features, and this one is a two-disc release. So the first disc is going to be your film. And thankfully, it's just widescreen. You might say, I'd like to watch it in full screen. You're living in the 80s, pal. Uh, there is no full screen copy inside here. Instead, it's widescreen, reauthored, and actually gives us a disc label, which is nice. So Spaceballs, characters there, uh, the MGM DVD logo down there at the bottom, disc one, feature film. Woohoo! We actually have a normal looking DVD here for Spaceballs. 
Now, our options here are different, and there is so much stuff on this one that I've had to take some notes for myself to keep track of what all is on this disc. Otherwise, I'm just going to wind up leaving something out. So on the film disc, it'll play an anti-piracy message and then play a trailer for the movie The Pink Panther. It was Steve Martin in it, right? Then it has a nice, cool little animated logo that says Spaceballs, the collector's edition. And on it, from a special feature standpoint, we have an audio commentary with Mel Brooks, which is probably the same one. You can watch the movie in ludicrous speed, which basically just means you press that option and the entire thing lasts 28 seconds. And it's super, super fast and very pixelated, so it's not very fun to actually watch that way. Um, the menu does tend to rotate, so you got, you know, at one point it's showing one scene, on the next point it's showing another scene as you go back and forth to the menus, which is cool. Um, our language choices have changed. Uh, for subtitles, we have Spanish, French, and now English. And for the spoken languages, we now have an English uh, DTS 5.1 surround mix, a Dolby 5.1 surround mix. In French, we have a French stereo surround mix. We have a Spanish mono track. And we have two other mono tracks that we can watch the film in, Moggies and Dinkies. Yes, the language of Mog, right, the dog characters like John Candy's character in the film, and the Dinks, which are basically the equivalent of Spaceball's Jawas. So even buried within the language settings, there are bonus features you can check out or space balls on that first disc. And again, the biggest bonus feature being the fact that compared to the other one, it's freaking real widescreen. It's anamorphic widescreen. Now, to clarify, because that just sounds weird, right? Moggies and Dinkies? Surely that can't actually be what's on the discs. And the answer is, you're right. It's not. Um, they're actually not real commentaries, which I guess you would imagine because it would have been Barks and Dinks, right? Um, but if you turn on the one, for instance, for the uh, Mogs or the Moggies commentary, it says, We forget to inform you that during the recording of the following audio track, the two Mogs that we had hired to do the voiceover work for Dark Helmet and Colonel Sanders began to fight and completely destroyed the recording studio. Due to a casting error, we later discovered that they were both alpha males. The following raw recording is all that exists. We apologize. And then for the Dinks one, the Dinkies commentary, again, it's not a full audio track, it's a commentary, but they're putting it on the menu as if it's a full audio track. This one instead pops up a message that says, We regret to inform you that shortly in the production of this particular audio track, the Dinks voiceover union went on strike. The following raw recording is all that exists. We apologize. And then in both cases, all that it is is a quick little few second sequence of seeing the Eagle Five basically going to light speed or going to hyperspace, and then uh, Colonel Sanders and Dark Helmet making a comment to each other about how it just took off, uh, that they weren't able to catch them, and that was it. I mean, it's literally probably less than 10 seconds total. But they do have the barking and dinking language over top of it, which I guess is cool. Just kind of a weird additional thing, um, but kind of neat to see because most DVD authoring doesn't get into quite so amusing and uh, creative ways of addressing the idea of bonus features. But then again, this is Spaceballs. You would hope they would be creative. Inside, you then turn the little flap, and we've got our bonus disc. The bonus disc gives us Spaceballs, Eagle 5 Winnebago, Disc 2 Special Features, MGM logo there, um, product number, DVD logo, and so forth, as one would probably expect. And just one side of content, thank goodness. And holy crap, it's a lot of content. Um, you put it in, you get your anti-piracy warning. Again, this is a gigantic list. That one page is nothing but its bonus features. Uh, you will pick between the Winnebago, or Vespa's uh, vessel, or the uh, Mega Maid. And you will find featurettes, including Spaceballs, the documentary. Uh, in Conversation, Mel Brooks and Thomas Meehan. John Candy, Comedic Spirit. Then under Section 4, Galleries, you have Spaceballs, the Behind the Movie Photos, Spaceballs, the Costume Gallery, and Spaceballs, the Art Gallery. You go under Trailers, and you get the Exhibitor Trailer with an introduction by Mel Brooks, the Theatrical Trailer, and a uh, other great MGM Releases Trailer, and more great MGM Releases Trailer, where it's one of those trailers that's not really for one film, it's for a mismatch of several of them. Then you have a Fun and Games section, which is pretty cool. Uh, you have the film flows, which are like bloopers. Uh, you have several of those. Edge of the Mirror uh, grabs himself early. The Magic Reappearing Ring, More Than His Head. 
No End In Sight and Tracks Behind Dot. Then you have the Space Quotes section that are just audio quotes of different characters. Um, it's like a wheel where you pick the characters. You can choose between Barf, Lone Star, Vespa, Dot, Scroob, Dark Helmet, and Yogurt. And each one basically has two different quotes, except for Scroob, who has three, and Dark Helmet, who has seven. Um, and then you have the uh, trivia game that's built in, which is kind of cool. The trivia game basically asks you multiple choice questions, and if you get something correct, it plays a special correct image, like Yogurt saying you're correct or whatever, or with Lone Star and Barf. Um, if you're incorrect, it gives you a scene showing you're incorrect, like the suck, suck, suck part near the end, or where they're all huddled together before, thank you, about ready to die. Um, lots of cool stuff there. Um, you do have a, a ludicrous speed button that you can click, but all it does is do like a hyperspeed effect, and then it's gone. It's nothing special. Uh, it doesn't play the film in ludicrous speed or anything like that. And there's a storyboard to film comparison. So tons and tons of special features all on the second disc of Spaceballs The Collector's Edition from 2005. Again, this is the one you're looking for. Bear in mind, though, this color scheme we're going to see in our next episode is reflected very similarly on the TV series DVD release. So make sure, if you're looking for the film, that it does have the film actors on it, not the animated characters, because it's easy at first glance to just see, oh, Spaceballs, and grab it and not realize you're grabbing the TV series. And trust me, the TV series is absolute garbage. Then came 2006, and we got a re-release. Spaceballs. Like, didn't we just see that? And no, we did not. The top is your subtle difference. Red or blue. A okay, blue is 2006, red is 2000. So we have MGM logo, just a uh, blue line going across, Mel Brooks, John Candy, Rick Moranis, Mel Brooks' Spaceballs, exact same cover art there. On the side, slight difference. We've got MGM DVD, Spaceballs, then the characters, and the MGM logo down at the bottom. On the back, essentially the same back, extremely funny, blah, 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 same stuff. Features mentioned, albeit down in the corner, they have changed it so it's not just that little box uh, that says standard version and widescreen version. It's now within sort of the box of regular stats up here. Uh, but again, what we've got here is going to include, according to the back, ooh, widescreen and a full screen. Oh, but what does that mean? Let me open it. It's a reissue, all right. Sort of. It's this one again. Okay. This is the same disc as released in 2000. Exact same special features, exact same menus, exact same authoring. The only difference is that whereas in 2000, each side had one of those ring-type labels that pinned down what was on either side. Now it's just one that points out what's on both sides. So one side has no ring label at all. The other side has one of those black ring labels. And this one, again, starting with space balls or starting with around space balls, this has a DVD symbol, space balls, side A widescreen, copyright 2000. So still, again, the same authoring of it. Product number, 96 minutes, side B, flip side, standard. Okay. So exact same disc again, only just like the transition for Star Wars between 2005 and 2006, they've changed the label on it or what little there is that passes for a label on this one, but just reissued the same disc in 2006. So kind of like those who in 2005 were annoyed because they bought the Star Wars trilogy and didn't realize that when actually you look back at the previous year, 2004, that was the cool one with all the special features. Same kind of thing happening here with Spaceballs. 2006, crappy reissue. 2005, all the cool bonus features on the collector's edition. That same year, 2006, we saw the first time that MGM decided to reissue Spaceballs or re-release Spaceballs in a package with another film, something that is thematically similar by being a comedy, basically, or a parody, basically, so that they could sell it all over again and move some of that inventory. That release from 2006 includes a film with maybe not one of the coolest theme songs, because Spaceballs had a really cool theme song, as we saw last time, um, but... One that has a very memorable song, and that is the one about how we're men, we're men in tights. We have here the 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment and MGM Home Entertainment double feature DVD set that includes Robin Hood Men in Tights and Spaceballs. So our cover here says a Mel Brooks film, Robin Hood Men in Tights. Okay, we have our 
uh, Robin Hood down there. I tend to look at him and think Saw immediately because I love that film series. And then over on this side, sort of a condensed, squeezed-down version of the cover of the DVDs. So no blue or red up at the top, but then we've got our three cast members here. Uh, Mel Brooks' space balls, except the Mel part for Brooks is above the word Brooks. And then similar image down there at the bottom is what we've seen. You look on the side, and this is also split. So you've got a uh, double feature DVD set, or double feature two DVD set, excuse me. 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment, Robin Hood Men in Tights, Spaceballs, MGM logo, DVD. Okay, so we've got this deal going on that allows them to do this paired release. On the back, no images, but information about both. So in both cases, you've got your little tagline at the top, Maximum Movie Experience. Logo for the film, description of the film, stats on any special features for the film, cast crew information, vital stats about the discs, and then your legalese and stuff down at the bottom. Now, looking at this, you should have been able to warn yourself if you took a look. Because if you look at Spaceballs, it says, let's see, widescreen, 1.85 by 1. Full screen, 1.33 by 1. Oh, crap. Widescreen and full screen. So you can pretty much bet it's that same disc over again, right? But you could also look at Robin Hood Men in Tights where it says widescreen. Hey, it's widescreen too, but it says widescreen anamorphic, 1.85 by 1. Yes. So when you open it up, your Robin Hood Men in Tights DVD, this is anamorphic widescreen. This will spread your widescreen image across your television on a modern widescreen TV. As for Spaceballs, here we go again. Same disc that has now been issued three times, including this reissue. The second time it's had the side with one black label instead of the black with red on both sides that we saw in 2000. Same disc. Package in here. But at least in this case, it's kind of forgivable, because in this case, you would expect that it's just going to be a disc from some previous release just packed in with a release uh, of a previous disc from Robin Hood Men in Tights. In this case, it may be disappointing to find out that it's letterboxed widescreen instead of anamorphic, but at least you kind of know to expect an old disc just repackaged with Robin Hood Men in Tights. Then just two years later, and... I guess we can kind of admire their restraint for not doing a new release in 2007. Uh, in 2008, we got another of these double features, this time pairing Spaceballs with a different film, but another Mel Brooks film in this case, just like with Men in Tights. We have bum, ba, da, bum, Spaceballs with Young Frankenstein. Similar packaging here. 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment, MGM, double feature two DVD set. We have our it was there for Young Frankenstein. It says, uh, the funniest comedy of all time. A Mel Brooks film, Young Frankenstein. And then Spaceballs is the same on that side. Similar setup here. Once again, we have double feature two DVD set, 20th Century Fox logo, Young Frankenstein, Spaceballs, MGM logo, DVD logo here. On the back, same setup, maximum movie experience. So they're both maximum. So I guess like they're equal somehow, right? They're both the maximum. Maximum movie experience, and by maximum we mean screw you if you want something that's anamorphic that's actually going to take up your whole screen. Uh, uh, maximum doesn't actually mean it's got to be good. It just means you know maximum something. Okay, probably getting the maximum money's worth out of that same author double-sided disc. Then we have Young Frankenstein Spaceballs description of each special feature listing for Spaceballs. No special features listed for Young Frankenstein at all. Cast listing, vital stats, and again you take a look. And this one doesn't say Young Frankenstein is anamorphic, but Young Frankenstein does take up the whole width of a modern widescreen TV. And that Young Frankenstein disc is this one. I'm not going to spend too much time on the discs that it's packaged with that aren't space balls. And then the space balls disc, surprise, surprise, surprise. Same thing, reissued again, our fourth time seeing that DVD authoring, our third time seeing that one side DVD label. But then we actually see this same package with Young Frankenstein get reissued as they're doing some sort of celebratory anniversary type stuff uh, for MGM. And we wind up with this version. Woo, look at that, it is so shiny. 
double feature. Essentially the same images here, just shrunk down so it's got the cool little sort of golden yellowish design that's all nice and shiny going along the side. Two DVD set down there at the bottom. But boy does that spine and that back look familiar. Wait a second. It's a damn card. The whole thing looks familiar. It's the exact same release, except they put this card on the front of it inside the shrink wrap. When you open it up, it's loose. I just stuck it in over the main cover. So if you see this and think it's a different release than this, no, they're the exact same thing, just with a piece of cardboard over the top inside the shrink wrap. For me, I guess it's basically a different release, so... I'm good with that, but just know that you're not actually getting a different product, you're just getting a different piece of cardboard. But again, that's five different product releases now that use that same DVD authoring, the two-sided full-screen widescreen with the widescreen being letterboxed, and that is now, what, four times that we've seen that same black little label, because yes, it is just that same old Spaceballs DVD. Our final multi-film package for Spaceballs for this episode is actually a little bit different than the others in its style. I kind of like this style, but it certainly does take up more space. In 2008, same year that we saw Young Frankenstein packaged in with Spaceballs, we also saw a three-movie pack with Spaceballs, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. That is this. This one's a little bit tougher to find these days. It's a cardboard slip case or slip cover with the individual film releases inside. So we have DVD three pack, Keanu Reeves, Alex Winter, George Carlin, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Steve Martin, Michael Caine, or Michael Caine, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, and then Mel Brooks, John Candy, Rick Moranis, Mel Brooks' Space Balls. Uh, same information there. They've just basically taken the logo and the, uh, uh, people's names, scooted it down beside the image so that it could fit in that smaller space. The back, three DVDs, one great price. Information on each film here, but it's basically just a quick description and then a little bit of technical details down there on the bottom. Uh, for Spaceballs, it again points out widescreen and full screen, so we kind of know what's coming here. And uh, interestingly, it shows us the DVD covers, but they're not actually going to match. Notice that is the DVD cover they're showing us from 2000, which should mean that the disc inside is going to have the ring label on both sides, not just one. And it'll have the red full screen and widescreen, not just white text, in theory. Then we have our spine, DVD 3-pack, MGM logo, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, Space Balls, and the DVD logo. Again, it's just a cardboard slip cover. So inside that, we have Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Yeah, not going to spend too much time looking at it, because that is not our focus, but as far as the disc goes, it's that disc. If you're someone who collects Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and happens to know uh, different releases from each other, it has a copyright date on there of 2001, if that helps you. Then we have Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, okay, with Steve Martin and Michael Caine. The disc, like so. And this one bears a copyright date on it of also 2001, and both of those are anamorphic widescreen. So it looks like maybe it was a transition of 2000 to 2001 where MGM was like, oh, we probably ought to make an anamorphic widescreen instead of friggin' letterbox. What do you think? As for space balls, check it out. Not the red top. This is not the 2001 that it shows on the box. This is the 2005 release with the blue line up at the top but again, it's effectively just the same thing. The only big difference here is that they put the little sticker thing over the UPC code because it's not supposed to be sold separately. But yeah, inside, same disc. But again, because this is actually the 2005 release, not the 2001 that it showed on the back, it is the one that's only got the little circular label on one side. So that means that we have now seen in... Just today's coverage, six times of that same two-sided DVD being issued. Uh, once, I guess you could say, issued, and then the other times being reissued. And of those six, 
Only one of them, that one in 2000, had the label on both sides. So all other five times are not just identical in the authoring of the disc, but also in having just the one little ring label on the one side. And folks, we are just getting started. So here we are at the point of having 13 total Spaceballs releases we've looked at in this episode and the last, and we're not even halfway there yet. Three more episodes to go. Next time we'll look at more of Spaceballs on DVD and start delving into Spaceballs on Blu-ray, which is going to be something that carries us forward quite a bit with a lot of different retailer exclusives and, of course, reissues of the same freaking discs on DVD and Blu-ray over and over again. Spaceballs the merchandising. Spaceballs the reissued, double-sided, letterbox widescreen crap. But hey, at least it's got special features from the Laserdisc. Ugh! So just to recap before we go, 2000. 2005, good one. This is the one to look for. 2006, back to crap. 2006, with Men in Tights. 2008, with Young Frankenstein, no fancy shiny cover. 2008, with Young Frankenstein, with the shiny cover. And 2008, Big Box, with Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. If you're trying to collect space balls, it's really kind of a frustrating thing. But I will say that for the purposes of this show, and for future editions of A Saga on Home Video, I actually kind of like... The Spaceballs has such a different approach to Star Wars. Yes, we've got a bunch of reissues, but you usually don't see Star Wars films packaged with something else outside of something like that 75th anniversary 20th century box package. So seeing how Spaceballs was paired up with different films and the logic behind that and the form in which those multi-film packages took, I actually think it's kind of a neat thing to look at and gives us another side of the home video market and home video marketing that we don't really get a chance to see when looking at regular Star Wars releases. So in that sense, I think it's definitely worthwhile, but... Boy, is it frustrating seeing that same crappy disc over and over again. And it's going to keep happening until 2015. Yes, that same disc, that same double authored disc, will be in circulation for 10 years with the same label and for 15 years with the same double-sided authorship. Whew! Basically, word to the wise, if you're going to get Spaceballs on DVD, get it from 2005 and ignore it from every other year. Spoiler alert! But we'll see more with DVD and Blu-ray for Spaceballs in our next episode. With that, we'll wrap up this episode. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with the home video viewers. And may the Force be with the home video viewers. And may the Force be with the home video viewers. And may the Force be with the home video viewers. See, I can reissue the same crap, too.